Welcome, welcome to the Josh Hall Web Design Show. Web Design Show, helping you build better websites and create a web design business that gives you freedom and a lifestyle you love. What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 24. In this one, we're going to talk about the importance of online community, specifically for web designers. As entrepreneurs and business owners, we all need a supportive community. And this can be found in a number of different ways, whether it's in-person meetups and uh, networking groups and organizations like that. But there's a ton of options out there for online communities as well, whether it's a private Facebook group or forums or masterminds or things like that. And I've found as a web designer, getting involved in a supportive online community has been key. And reason being is because as a web designer, as you've probably found out as well, or maybe if you're new to the game and you haven't experienced this quite yet, it can be very lonesome. When you're designing websites, you're often at home alone, or you're even if you're in a co-working place or an agency or something, it's just you and your screen. So it can be very lonesome. So getting into an online community where you're supported, where you find others just like yourself who are having the same struggles and challenges, it can really do so much. And it has literally changed my life. You guys hear me talk about Divi all the time. It's the platform that I build all of our websites through. And the great thing about Divi, as you'll hear in this interview, in this episode, is that the community around it is amazing. So for this talk, I've brought in somebody who is really passionate about this subject, who's getting involved more in the community and is now giving back to the community. And it's Keegan Lanier. He is a side hustler web designer. So he has a day job, but he also does sites in the evenings and weekends and part time. And for him, community has been everything to keep him going as he is early in his process uh, and his journey with taking web design to the next level. And like I mentioned, what was cool about Keegan, the reason I wanted to have him on for this episode is that he's not a taker, he's a giver. And that's the biggest thing. When you get into an online community, you got to be a giver. You got to give back. Even if you're new in the game, you likely have a lot of experience that is going to be very valuable to other people. So Keegan now not only has a website where he offers products in and around Divi, but he has a podcast. He started the Divi Addicts podcast where every week he talks about a new Divi trick or helpful tips and tricks that will help you in your business. And it was a great example of how community not only helped him, kept him engaged, but now he's giving back. And there's so many other areas where an online community is going to be crucial for you in what can be a very lonely journey as a web designer entrepreneur. So can't wait for you to hear this. More importantly, can't wait for you to help apply it to your journey and get involved in the Divi community. Now, before we dive in, since we're talking about Divi, if you are new to WordPress and new to Divi, it can be tough to know where to start or what resources to look at and how to figure out how to build a site with Divi and how to get connected. And I have a course that will help you through that. It's my Divi WordPress beginners course. It's the most cost effective, quickest way to get from point A to point B, learn how to use Divi. And then I'll give you all the resources that I've learned in my journey so far with groups, support, all the links and all the plugins and tools that I use. And it's going to help you really jumpstart your journey into Divi and WordPress. So I would love to help you out through my Divi WordPress beginners course if you're interested in that. All right, guys, without further ado, enjoy my conversation with Keegan Lanier about how having an online community as a web designer, particularly the Divi community, is really going to help you in your journey. It has done wonders for me, and I can't wait to hear how it's going to help you as well. Enjoy. Keegan, welcome to the show. Great to have you on, man. Dude, it's awesome to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I've been looking forward to chatting with you because uh, we are, we're going to talk about the importance of being in an online community as a web designer, or in your case, as a side hustler web designer, because you have a situation I think a lot of web designers find themselves in to where they're you know working full time, but they're also doing web design. And I think maybe more so in somebody in your type of situation to where um, you're, you know, doing things part time and you're just really, you know, taking the the first step into to web design. You need a supportive community around you, and as you know, and as I know, the Divi community is second to none. So I'm really excited to talk about that and to hear about uh, how it's helped you and and your your endeavors. But let's just start out with who you are and what you do right now. Yeah. So my name is Keegan Lanier. Um, as a full-time job, I have been in, rest- in the restaurant industry for as long as I can remember, from flipping burgers in high school, you know, to running full-service restaurants uh, just after college, into multi-unit consulting kind of kind of gigs. 
Um, I've spent a lot of time in that space, but <clears throat> taking me all the way back to junior high, websites were always uh, a passion. They were always something I just enjoyed doing from my first computer back in maybe 96 or 97. I was building HTML websites and then uh, kind of got away from it as I got into college and you know started building a, a career. But whenever the company that I was with, company that I'm currently with, um, we were really small when I joined them and we grew a little bit. And in that early stage, you know, there's a lot of a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of things changing. And so I was able to create a lot of our systems, our recipes, and just some of the processes that we use today. And as we got bigger, that opportunity got less and less because we became more structured, more systematized. We found out what worked. And I really missed that creative outlet. And so immediately jumped right back in the websites, probably in 2014 or 2015. Okay. <clears throat> And that kind of led me back to WordPress because I was, you know, what's going on now? I'm sure people aren't still coding HTML sites from scratch, which I guess they still are. But uh, at that point, that wasn't something I was interested in. I wanted to blog and kind of put myself out there and share whatever's going on up here with the world. So it brought me back. Awesome. So with your the company you work for full time right now, are you in uh, any sort of like IT, you know, development kind of role? Or what does that look like? Yeah, uh, so not currently, but I was for a long time. When I came out of operations about three years into the company, I transitioned into what we called ops support. And uh, basically, I took like our individual point of sale systems from multiple locations and brought them into the, a cloud system. I uh, built out our actual versus theoretical inventory programs and a bunch of other like behind the scenes stuff uh, to support the operations, which were all either database or tech related in some sort of way. Okay. So when, and then when you got into doing, you know, back in the, the web design world doing freelance, when you came across Divi and Elegant Themes, it was probably like a breath of fresh air, right? Compared to some of that terrible, I mean, that just sounds awful what you're talking about with back end, <laughs> anything back end, database, anything like yeah. point of sale. So anything like that just makes me cringe. I can only imagine. Yeah. So they're fun, you know, it, they have their own, it's kind of fun, I guess. I'm a weird guy when it comes to that kind of stuff, but it's fun to build those things. But whenever you get into something that's just so uh, design oriented and, and, you know, kind of feels like Photoshop, especially with, I mean, we didn't even talk about this, but the, the new layers that just came out, that option, you know, it very feels very Photoshop-ish. And that's what I love about Elegant Themes. You know, I've used and in the journey, starting out, I used Jupiter and X theme and a ton of uh, was WP Bakery now, a visual composer. Uh, I used that a lot early on. There's no comparison. Like when I yeah. first put my hands on Divi, I was like, okay, this is this is what I'm gonna build every site on for a lot of reasons. I mean, it's easy to use and it's great, but also you, you really can't beat the price structure. If you're a developer and you get a lifetime subscription, I mean, you can't beat that. I, it's dirt cheap. I, yeah. I think it's re I, they honestly think it's a terrible business model because it's so cheap. Like it's just crazy. I've said, I've said it before in a few different episodes, but I would pay thousands of dollars for Divi because it's crucial to my business. I can't believe how cheap it is. Yeah. I'm, I'm in the same boat as you. I, I look at it and I just don't understand. Like I have, t I've had conversations with people and you know, we're talking about David Blackman before we, before we started recording and David's a, I'm a great guy. He's a good friend of mine. He's somebody I, I float a lot of ideas off of. And, uh, you know, he's, he said the same thing. He's, he's like, I just don't understand how they have that price point. He's like, so I, but he does know that there's a, or he, at least he told me that there's quite a few people who are on the, the recurring yearly plans, which man, yeah, dude, go lifetime. I know. Even what I is it? Building one site. Why not? Yeah. What is it? 89 bucks now a year versus yeah. 200 something yeah. for a lifetime. Yeah. That was, that was my gamble. Whenever I was looking at it, it's like, well, I don't know if I'm really going to like this, but if I do, I'll save, I'll save essentially a year. Cause if you buy a year and then you were to go and buy a lifetime later, it take you four years to pay it off as opposed right. to like, screw it. Here's three, here's 200 bucks. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's really interesting. Like, so when you got, when you got into elegant themes and got into Divi, um, did you realize that there was a community around it initially or did you just, did it, did you just kind of stumble across that? I had no idea. It was, uh, it was just serendipity. It was meant to happen, man. Uh, I just love the, I love the product. I thought it was really well done. I thought it was super easy. The building blocks just made sense to me. And, uh, you know, the, the community came a little bit later. And yeah, so, so you got into Divi, what you said, like 
14, 15, something like that? 2015. Yeah, 2015. Okay. It was like, it was before um, or right around the, the release of, uh, I think, 2.4 or maybe whatever, the one right before that. Somewhere between 2.0 and 2.4. Okay. Yeah. So I, I think I had been in probably about a year before you as far as getting used to Divi. And yeah, <laughs> same thing. I mean, I, I I had used Elegant Themes previously. And then once I heard about Divi, uh, once I came around to it, I started liking the platform more. And then it became, okay, I'm not using another theme. I, there's no reason I would use anything else in Divi. And then, as you probably found out, that's when I realized there was a community around it. And this was before, I don't know how, how you feel, you know, with your situation, but it was before I realized how important an online community for a web designer is because I have found that like there's local things you can do. You can go to meetups, particularly now since there's Divi meetups and there's WordCamps and those are all great, but that ongoing support is very lacking for freelance web designers. It, it can be very lonesome, particularly for a lot of people who are either doing it side time like or side hustling like you are or like... I know for years I worked at home by myself and it became very lonely, particularly for me as an extrovert. I like engaging with people and stuff. So it was kind of, uh, it was a tricky, you know, thing to, to learn and get used to because I didn't have that community support. And look, family and friends are just not going to under there. You're not going to be able to talk with your family and friends about WordPress or Divi or website stuff. So, I mean, having that online community is just crucial. And I know for me, once I dipped my toe into the Divi community, I had no idea how wide reaching it was and how supportive mm -hmm. and amazing it was. Uh, and it really kind of caught me off guard. Did you have that same experience when you got into Absolutely. it? Absolutely. I mean, it's, you know, it's with other platforms that I had used or other things that I had been around. A lot of times when you go to support, you get the snarky, you know, the snarky comments, the why don't you Google that? Or let me Google that for you. Or, you know, you get those, those comments that just aren't helpful. You've seen, we've all seen them. Right. And you, you just really, especially at that time when the community was a little bit smaller and Divi didn't have such a, a massive user base. Um, it was even more at that point where it was just over the top helpful. You know, I'm having this problem with code. They're like, okay, here's, here's your fix. And here's literally the code to fix it. Here's where you put it. I'm like, who are these people? Like this is, this is next level. And then you'd have, you know, you'd find tutorials with stuff that like Gino was doing. I mean, just really over the top, high quality stuff. And then, you know, Divi space, Divi life, you, um, there's a ton of other ones out there. I mean, that just the, the quality of help and how like the people are just, they're, they're friendly, you know, they're actually just nice, caring, willing to help human beings. It's, it's nice and it's different. Yeah, it is different. You, I mean, that's it right there. It is very different. You go to an online support forum or, or web designer group, typically, like you said, you're going to get those snarky developer types where you just feel nervous about posting a question like, oh, I'm probably going to get ripped here if I you know, ask oh, yeah. <laughs> about something here. But And yeah, the Divi community is much bigger now. Some of that stuff may happen periodically, but like nine times out of 10, it's going to be quality response and quality support. Oh, yeah. And yeah, it is so different. That's one thing that the Divi community itself is, is just remarkable. It's one thing I tell people and my students all the time who are just getting into web design because some people that are coming to me now are looking at different platforms. There's Elementor, there's Oxygen, there's all these other WordPress builders. Uh, and one thing I always say is, look, Divi is the framework, it's the tool. But aside from that, the community itself is just worth getting into. Like it's worth getting Divi just for the community and the amazing support that you'll get. And I know, you know, you've experienced that. And I'm sure we'll talk about the fact that you've kind of, you've taken what you've learned and it sounds like you've appreciated all the help you got. And now you're kind of in the, in the early stages of giving back, which is really cool because I'm sure we'll talk about, you started a podcast and you're, you're really active in the groups now and also, you know, side hustling, doing it part time. Um, but what I'm curious, curious about is once you got into it, so, you know, you're doing web design on the side, you felt you like the groups and stuff. I mean, did you have any, did you do anything local? Were there any like WordPress meetups or anything like that? Or um, I guess the question is like, what did the, what did the Divi community mean to you in the early days? Yes. Yeah, so <clears throat> really, honestly, in the early days, it was, uh, how do I find the answer to these questions? You know, I was doing these projects and I would hit these roadblocks that I wasn't sure how to get past it, or I wasn't sure how to make 
divvy do what I wanted it to do. And uh, so that became, it became a sounding board, but also it was like going to school. It's, you know, it's nudging your friend who's sitting in the, in the chair next to you. Hey, how, how, how do I do this? What, what are they talking about? You know, so it was that community. It was that, that somebody that I could or uh, picture the community as an individual person, but it's a collective, you know, as, as somebody you can float things back and forth with. Um, I, man, starting out, I had, I had no idea what it was going to be, you know, what, what that would look like long term, but it was always just a, it was a sounding board for me. That's a good analogy of like sitting in a classroom and being like, Hey, uh, how do you do this? I never thought about that, but that's a really good analogy because that's exactly what a lot of these Divi Facebook groups are. It's, it's for, you know, there's a few different, um, aspects to those. Uh, For me, I always tell people that it's about support, number one. Uh, Not only technical support, but just uh, support about your endeavor and, and, you know, just support as a whole, Uh, whether it's business related or, uh, like I said, technical. But it's also for inspiration and encouragement too. Like that's one of the, it goes back to what the, the difference is between Divi compared to some of these other online communities is there is an aspect to encouragement and inspiration that you're just not going to find. It's, you know, I mean, I'm sure it sounds like you saw that pretty early on. Oh yeah. Uh, apart from technical support, there is just an mm-hmm. element of that encouragement, which is vital for freelance web designers. Like you need that to keep going. There's no doubt. There's, you know, you hit a roadblock and it's so easy to, to want to give up. But when you got people around you who are, who are farther down the road than you are, it's easy to look at those guys and say, you know, man, like, I know I could do that and I can do it differently enough that I think there's a space for it. You know, if you can do that, you'll have your own voice in it. So it'll automatically be a little bit different. But, you know, the uh, you're right. I mean, the, the motivation is it just never stops because as soon as you get to where you want to get, there's somebody else who's moved up too, and they're motivating you to continue to up your game. It's, it's, it's awesome. That's a good point. Yeah, there's like there's kind of a there's multiple there's multiple levels to it being in an online community, particularly in the website Divi community. And that is, yeah, there's people who they're kind of where you want to get to. And I know I've, I discovered that early on when I got into the community, I realized that there was a handful of like experts that were either creating child themes or getting really, there weren't too many courses back then, but um, there were people who were, you know, developing products in and around Divi, growing their businesses. And I realized kind of, that's where I want to get to. And then I know for me, I had already had probably about five years experience of running my business. And I had learned so much that I pretty early on discovered that I wanted to start giving back. I mean, I was learning and being motivated and encouraged. But at the same time, I realized, just like you said, I was like, you know what? There's a lot of people ahead of me, but there's also a lot of people behind me who are like where I was just a few years back. And early on, I I had the itch to to do teaching and to give back and to help people, which is my biggest joy, which is why I'm doing my whole endeavor with joshhall.co in this podcast. Um, And yeah, I wanted to give back immediately, at least from what I knew. It doesn't mean that I would position myself as an expert right away, but uh, I think one takeaway right away here with an online community is you don't want to be a taker. You want to be a giver. So I was, you know, I had taken some support and knowledge, but I pretty much gave back I mean, within a couple of weeks, I was answering support questions in some of the Divi Facebook groups and offering experience from what I had learned with client situations. And it really, really, um, I'm not, I don't want to say paid off because I literally didn't have any means of being paid for it back then, but it definitely <laughs> helped me like elevate as an authority pretty early on. Um, did you like, how, <clears throat> how soon did you realize that you were ready to start giving back instead of just you know, getting support and being encouraged? You know, it's, I don't know exactly if I can pinpoint when it was, but it was, I always had the appreciation for the people who were, who were giving knowledge so willingly. It's like, I felt like I needed to give back and I wanted to give back. You know, it's like, if you're going to be a part of any kind of a, any community, it doesn't matter if it's Divi or not. Like, like you said, I mean, you said it a second ago, you can't just be the taker, you know, and that's not who I am as a human being anyway, I mean, I want to, this, this should be a give and take and I want to, I want to provide as much value as I can. So for me, it was just kind of, let me look back at, at my skill set. What, what is life given to me that I can give back? And you know, it's really, 
it's cool in this community. Like there's a lot of, there's a lot of really awesome creatives and a lot of times, you know, I don't want to stereotype or put them in a box, but many of the creatives love the process of creating and they're unbelievable at what they do. They could do things and, and build stuff and design things that I never could. But a lot of times they love focusing on that. They don't care to focus much on the business side of things. So I think there's a lot of opportunity, you know, if they have the willingness to learn a little bit of foundational business stuff that will ultimately drive the ability to sell their creative, you know, there's something I know and there's something I can teach them. You know, I spent a lot of time building business. <laughs> so, so is that your strength in Keegan more <laughs> like the business side of things versus design and for sure. And that are okay. And I'm looking at, I look at every situation trying to figure out how I can make it the most efficient, you know, whether it's a, whether it's a workflow or, um, taking a site from, you know, from offer to, to stage, to build, to go live, you know, how can I shrink that time? How can I make it as effective and efficient as, a pos- as possible while still delivering like, to the quality that I expect myself to deliver? Yeah. And it sounds like your background probably lends itself to that with what you're doing in the, in the corporate world and everything with business, uh, as far as processes and systems and terms that sound super boring, but are super important. And, uh, they don't sound so boring once they help you start making a lot of money. Uh, that's when processes and systems become super cool. Uh, once they really start helping your business and saving you time. So uh, it's cool to hear how that kind of helped you not, I just love, I just love the fact that in web design, no matter what area of web design you're in, you can use your background, whatever it is, whether it's the business side, whether it's the creative side. Um, for me, it's more about connection and teaching. That's my biggest thing. Yeah. Uh, I'm not the best designer or coder in the world, but I'm pretty darn good at both of those to where I've Obviously, I built my business up around those to where I feel, you know, now I'm kind of sharing everything I learned through my courses and all my tutorials and everything. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I mean, the community, I know for me, and I'm curious about where exactly you got started in the community. For people listening to this who are maybe unsure about an <laughs> online community, what that looks like, because there's like, there's forums, there's Facebook yeah. groups, <clears throat> there's uh, in-person meetings like meetups and things like that. But where did it start for you? I know for me, I got into a couple of the big Divi Facebook groups and I had no idea how many there were, how many Facebook groups there were. So I started one called Divi Web Designers, yeah. having no idea that there was already like 40 other Divi groups. Uh, but through patience, perseverance and persistence and consistency, I've built up our group to 20. We just hit 20,000 two weeks ago. So That's it's incredible. become, I think it's the second biggest Divi group now, which is just nuts. And we're still very, I mean, you're, you're, you're a great <laughs> member. Like it's still a very positive group, which is unheard of for 20,000 people. Um, so I say that to say, like for me, I got started in the Facebook groups. What did that look like for you as far as the, the beginning of the uh, online support community for you? It was the same. Uh, Facebook groups were the, were the first part where I really found like the, the ongoing communication. You know, I spend a lot of time on Twitter and, uh, man, to be honest, like I've done it because it was, it was part of the, like this, the social media group, people that I've, I've connected with over the years, you know, whether it was through conferences a long time ago, social media marketing world and things like that. I'm very in- interested in that space. And so like a lot of those people lived in Twitter and I've been on it since 2009, but the web design community, like there's maybe two or three people that I know that I communicate with on a daily basis who are really active there. Oh, all, yeah. all of the WordPress conversations happen in the Facebook groups. <laughs> yeah. All the stuff. Yeah. And it's funny. I remember <clears throat> when I, when I got back into, cause I had elegant themes previously. And then once Divi came around, that's when I got into it. And then, uh, same thing. I kind of, I kind of like reignited me to get back into elegant themes, you know, per se. Um, but I would always have, if I had any technical questions, I would always send in a support ticket to elegant yeah. themes. And then once I figured out there were groups around it, I realized that, wow, I don't need to send in the support ticket to elegant themes. I can ask the question in this group. And it was life changing for <clears> me <throat> because most of the time you would get an instant response and more often than not, it was a good quality response. Uh, and uh, that's one thing that separates not only what we've talked about so far with the Divi community versus some of these other builders, but just the idea of a support group for a web designer in general. Like I know realtors 
and insurance agents and every industry out there has some sort of Facebook group. But let's be honest, a web designer support group is a completely different animal because it provides that, like you're talking about, like instant connection, which I think is just invaluable. I mean, I'm not sure. Have you ever had an op- a situation where like you broke something on a site or maybe um, you're in a bind and like, you know, like I remember uh, multiple times I'd have something going on on a site where I'm like, oh my gosh, I got to get this figured out stat. And the Facebook, you know, a couple of the Facebook groups before I even started mine, like saved my butt a number of different times. Oh yeah. I think that anybody <laughs> who's done this for any period of time is running the one or two of those, man. I have uh, seriously jacked up some things in the early days and, uh, you know, posted to the groups and they came in and saved the day, you know, and it was ironically, it was whenever I was still using, like I used to host with a two and, uh, you know, being in C panel, <clears throat> trying to figure that whole thing out. If I'd have had your course on C panel <laughs> back then, it might've saved my butt too. I could yeah. fix the problem before it started. But, um, Dude, I, I posted in the group after I had screwed up some, I think it was some email records, like some MX records, had things jacked up. People weren't getting emails. And you know, that's like in business, man. People start to lose their minds and rightfully so. Uh, we fixed that stuff really quick with a quick answer from one of the groups. And it was, uh, man, <laughs> definitely saved my butt. Yeah. yeah and you know, I like for me in the early days, I'm just trying to, to kind of think back <clears throat> to the early days of, of being in the groups feeling supported. I know for me, I didn't feel alone anymore, which like I talked about earlier, sitting in a home office, working by yourself. I had already gone through some community night classes for web design. And even though that wasn't Divi related, I felt a sense of community in there because we were all learning together. Kind of like your analogy, like we would ask each other questions and stuff. But then when I, when I was done with my program there and I was just on my own, I felt very lonely. And I mean, I think that's one of the most important things of, of having an online supportive online community because vice versa, you can be lonely and then join a web designer group. Then you can feel even more alienated and alone <laughs> if they're jerks to you. So Absolutely. that's the, the benefit with Divi itself, but I just didn't feel alone. And I, it, the support was, was huge, but yeah, that was kind of secondary for me at least was just the fact that I almost felt like I found my tribe. I mean, did you feel like that? Oh yeah. Pretty early on. Absolutely, man. Because, you know, that's the Divi community as a whole, the way I describe it, like the, the welcoming, you know, very helpful, supportive, all those words, like, it's the way I look at myself. Like I go out of my way. I feel like I go out of my way anyway, to help people who need the help. Like I'll spend as much time as needed. If somebody has an issue, you know, if I have friends who are in a bind, I'm going out to help them. Like, that's just kind of just the guy that I am. And so like, whenever you find something like that, it definitely feels like home. You know, you find people who are like you and who are like-minded, who are driven and who are willing to help anybody at any stage of the game. That's why would you want to go anywhere else? Yeah. Well, and what you're talking about there with just your personality of having that helpful spirit that lends itself perfectly to an online community, web design community like Divi, just because, and that's probably why it sounds like that's why you wanted to help early on. You wanted to start giving back instead of just being that taker. Um, so I'd love to talk about that, how, how you transitioned into, you know, now you're, you're kind of a, I guess I would still consider you an up and comer as far as like being a contributor, being a content producer with your podcast and your site and everything. But, um, what, one thing I wanted to ask was that like that helpful spirit, um, did it help your business as well? Like, did you actually start getting clients and see, did it make any impact on your business or was it more personality and, and development? In the, in the beginning, it was more, um, it was more like I wanted to put the content out to get comfortable behind the mic, to get comfortable behind the camera mm-hmm. and to share, um, you know, to share just more documentation of what I was doing and what the updates were with Divi, especially if you go back to the beginning of the podcast. You know, that part was the first time I really got out there. And it was all, hey, look what Divi did because they were doing the sneak peeks at that point. So a lot of those early episodes okay. are, hey, the theme builder's coming. Oh, hey, we're getting uh, copy and paste. And now it's, it's growing more into, let me share my experience. You know, this is, this is how I, this is my update process for websites. You know, this is whatever. This is how I streamline my business. These are the platforms I use to, to keep efficient workflows. You know, it's, it's evolved a little bit over time. But it's, man, it's, um, it's definitely helped get business. You know, people are, 
people are listening to it, even though it's, it is small. And I do appreciate you saying even up and comer, I don't think of myself, like I'm just kind of here doing my thing, whatever that looks like to the community, as long as I can, I can help and give back, you know, that's, that's more what it's about for me because I just want to continue to, to grow and create. And as I'm doing these podcasts or putting together videos on YouTube or whatever, it's kind of like, I'm still figuring it out myself too, you know? So it's a, uh, it's a process and hopefully, but hopefully, like you said, some people are in different parts of their journeys. If the one who's coming up can learn something from that, that's, that's huge. It's really awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, and the reason I say up and comer is because <clears throat> how many Divi podcasts are there? Mine is not Divi specific per se, but it's web design. Most of my audience is using Divi. Yours is a Divi podcast. There's Divi chat. Um, there is the, well, Divi nation was the official elegant themes podcast, but that's no longer active. I, I wish really they would bring that. that back. I know I Loved do too. It. That's it's actually one reason that was one of the jettisons for this podcast was this is kind of the new Divi nation. Like I'm talking with people in and around web design and experts yep. and uh, talking about that stuff. But I say that to say, there's really not many Divi podcasts like, uh, and there's more people doing tutorials now on YouTube and, and posting helpful articles and things like that, which is great. But what you're doing well and what a handful of others up and comers I would call are doing well is doing it consistently. And that's the big thing. Cause a lot of people, like I've seen so many people start doing tutorials and they do four or five and then they disappear. Well, yeah. no wonder you're not getting any success or traction because you did five tutorials and you disappeared. Like the trick to any success is consistency. And yep. I, I find that interesting because like, yeah, you're doing it. I mean, you're doing it part time. I realize that um, your passion for the community around Divi and, and web design is not your full time job, but you're still doing it consistently. And that says a lot about you and your work ethic and more, more than anything, your mission to help people. Yeah. And that's all it takes is doing it consistently. Like you will find some semblance of success, whether it's small or big scale, if you do something consistently. So, um, you know, I've seen that your, your podcast, I've been getting into more, particularly on like little, uh, updates and tweaks. Oh, yeah. Your podcast is the Divi addicts podcast, which is Divi specific. Um, and there's some tech, there's some cool technical things in there, which I kind of appreciate. I actually, sometimes I found myself, when it comes to like Divi updates and stuff, sometimes I'll either listen to your podcast or watch a Daryl Wilson video or, or some, or somebody who does um, like a recap of the update yeah. along with just looking <clears throat> at the elegant themes video, just to kind of see how it's resonating with the community. I mean, sometimes I'll test things out myself, but I'm a busy guy right now too. I don't have the time right now to, to fiddle around with every update right now. Um, right. So it's, that's been very helpful for me too. So I say all that to say, you're on a really good path. You're on the right track. You're doing things consistently. I'd actually like to transition the conver the conversation to talking about that. Like when, cause with your website, King Linear Media, you're doing services for client based stuff, but you've also got the element of Divi in there where you've got Divi layouts. Um, yeah. You've got some other uh, resources. <clears throat> like what did that look like for you? Did you, did you decide to kind of have a foot in the freelance world, but also in Divi? um, for support, but also monetarily as well. Or what did that look like? It changes every day, man. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could tell you there was a master plan. Um, <clears throat> originally the site was, was all about service work. I mean, it was, we do websites come to the site. This is what we do. This is a range of prices. I even had a quote generator at one point, you know, I've tried a lot of different things. Oh, how'd this that was, work out? <laughs> it didn't, you know, it did really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that went away and then, um, you know, added in the, the other pieces I took uh, a couple years ago, I took David and Thames, uh, Divi business experts course. And so I really started getting into the, uh, the service plans or maintenance agreements and, um, uh, even offering hosting to a select few. I don't want to just like open it up and be somebody's host without the rest of it. You know, I'll do it if I've built their site, but hosting somebody else's stuff, not really. Yeah, it's not really worth it in the long run, but yeah. uh, doing the maintenance and all those other things, it just happened really organically. And then the, the Divi layouts were more, it's really to keep me sharp. You know, we talk about how time is, is so limited, you know, you stay busy. And so my way of kind of testing out the new, the new features, playing around with all the new stuff is twofold. I, I force myself to go in and play with the updates so that I can produce 
the content to give back to the community. So it's a, this is, these are my thoughts around it. Here's a layout that's included in it and go from there. But it's all, man, it's, okay. uh, I just, I just roll with it every day and hopefully it works out. Yeah. And what about the podcast? So you, <laughs> when did you start the Divi Addicts podcast? Dude, it's almost 22 months ago. I started it in like, uh, I think it was May of 2018. 18. Okay. Yeah. It's been, okay. it's and- been a while. Was that similar? Like you just wanted to kind of, you know, engage the Divi community, uh, you know, and share your experience. What was the beginning of that from a community I perspective? I really think it was, I think it was trial and error. You know, it was me trying to figure out where I could bring the most value and where people would, would engage with it, whatever form, you know, to see if there were more people listening to podcasts and there were watching tutorials versus reading blog posts. Oh, and, Okay. Uh, you know, the, the people, the listeners continued to steadily grow. Um, the, the estimated or the average weekly listeners continued to slowly grow. So it was something that I just stayed continually doing. And honestly, like the way I do it and the format I do it, my podcast is so easy to put together. Like I have, um, I've got topics written out through the end of April and I'd sit there and, you know, when I have a minute, I go through and I do an intro, I type up an intro, I type up the whole transcript, I type up what I want to do. Mm-hmm. And then I just roll through it. And I can, there's, there's been days where I've recorded six or seven podcast episodes back to back. Cause it's just me, you know, it's not, I don't have to worry about coordinating schedules and, and doing all those yeah, things. Cause you're not doing interviews yet. Right. Exactly. Yet. Not yet. <laughs> so it really, the, the podcast has stayed so consistent because people consistently listen. So I, I have to assume that there's, there's some value that people are taking away from it, you know, which is, that's, that was the whole purpose yeah. of it. To begin with. Uh, how many, how many episodes do you do? Do you do like one a week or one every two weeks yeah, on average? Or? One a week. So they post every Tuesday at like 6 a.m. They go live. So it's yeah, like clockwork, man, every Tuesday. Awesome. Consistency, man. Going back to that consistency. I mean, you're, again, you're sharing your experience, what you've learned and whether it's technical things related to Divi or whether it's web design business or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, I think that's valuable. And like I said, I mean, the thing with, I think for anyone who wants to get into a community and become more authoritative, whether it's from a perspective of just helping others out or whether it's monetary, like whether you want to have a side business of selling child themes or build other sources of recurring revenue and income. Look, you know this, man, I'm all about recurring revenue and income and, <laughs> and dividing your income streams to have multiple recurring income streams. And uh, as much as my mission is to help people, like I also have two girl, I have two baby girls, a wife and an adorable hungry golden retriever. And we have a house we need to pay for and I need to feed them. So like there's, there's you know, a lot of pressure on me to build up solid recurring income. Of course. And I say that to say the Divi marketplace of child themes, layouts, uh, more people are interested in doing courses like, like you talked about kind of sharing what you've learned. Um, it's wide open for that. It's it just is. amazing. And what I love is you talked about going through David and Tim's business expert course is I have a business course too. And we've actually had students who have gone through both of our courses. Uh, and the cool thing about it is we cover a lot of the same topics, whether it's pricing or collecting content and all that stuff, but we all have different experiences and there's so much value you can get by going through training from different people who have different experiences. It can be the same topic because pricing, for example, there is no right or wrong web design pricing. And that's one benefit of the Divi community in itself is just asking about pricing. Like that's one of the top questions we probably get in the, in our Divi group is how should I price my websites or uh, how much should I charge? You know, it, and uh, that's another aspect of support that you would be hard pressed to find somewhere else, uh, which really separates the community. So, you know, it all goes back to just people giving, giving out what they've learned and sharing their experience. Yeah. The thing I, you know, we talk about how helpful a lot of it is, but I don't know that I've mentioned it today is like how you you just brought that point up is how open they are. You know, it's people just, they, they're not holding a lot close to the vest. They're like, man, this is, this is exactly what I'm charging annually for maintenance. Go do it because people are paying it like charge. You're charging too little, go charge, you know, or, you know, this is what we're charging for this type of a website. So it's, 
<clears throat> you don't have to worry about trying to find false information. Like you can get it directly from the source and people are just here. This is what I'm doing. Like there's plenty out there. Like there's enough for all of us. Why, you know, we're not, we're not taking from each other. We're not poaching from each other. Cause trust me, there's a lot of bad websites out. So go get them. Yeah, that's a great point. That <laughs> is something that separates the Divi community in particular is that openness and transparency. Like you said, I mean, I know when I was in that, when I was doing night school in the community college, I remember my <laughs> teacher, we were, I was in a Dreamweaver course and the teacher Ooh. was, he was a, I think he was a freelance designer working from home and stuff. And he taught on the side and I'll never forget. He was building this one site out and it was on a development server and uh, he was showing us the site, but he was so secretive about the URL. He was like, I can't show you guys the URL because this is in development. And I'm like, who, who cares? No one gives two <laughs> craps about this site that you're working on. That's like, you know, like there's so much secret, there is so much secrecy, uh, particularly in web design, not only technical, like, you know, technically, but particularly when it comes to pricing. Uh, and that caught me off guard too. Cause yeah, when I started, I just going back to feeling alone, I had no idea what to do as far as charging. I had no idea what people were um, not only charging for the websites, but how they were structuring their price ranges or any of that. And once I got in the Divi community, same thing, it really empowered me. And then I in turn felt like that openness that I saw made me feel more open. Cause I was like, you know what? I feel comfortable sharing that too, which I've always been kind of an open book with that stuff. Um, and it's huge. I mean, and that's the difference too when people talk about mentorship and coaching and training and they want to help people for a lot of people, they need to see and need to understand real numbers. And I'm one of those people. Like I can't say, I, I don't want to see something where somebody is like, yeah, you can make a good living doing web design. Well, I'm right. like, all right, what's that mean? Is that like 50,000 a year or is that like a hundred thousand or is that 250,000? Like, what does that mean? Or a lot of people previous to being in the Divi community I saw would would be like, yeah, you want to you know charge a good amount for your website designs. I'm like, well, I have no idea what that means. So that's a good the, the practical actual <laughs> amounts are huge. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's one thing I'm big on. Like, I'll say, listen, this site we're doing for three thousand dollars. Here's why. And you know, just being transparent and real about it. So yeah, yep. I can't agree more, man. That's that really the openness and transparency is crucial for a freelance web designer. Crucial. It is. It's the only way to gauge if it's going to be like really beneficial for you because everybody's situation is different. Like you said, you know, you can make a good, a good living. Well, a good living really depends. If you're a, a single guy living in an apartment where your rent is 600 bucks a month, I mean, a good living looks different than if you're married with two kids and you have a house and you live you know, in a, in an expensive market, like those, well said. those are relative, man. Everything is different depending on your life. You know, and I didn't think about that Keegan, but I, <clears throat> I think that idea right there, just of like, when you get into an online community, particularly like Divi, you can kind of formulate, um, relationships and build your network depending on where you are in life. Like, I, what I found, what's been really interesting is I heard this quote a, a while back and I love it. And it's your vibe attracts your tribe. Mm -hmm. And what I've found is that a lot of people coming through my courses are, I'm about 60% dudes and 40% gals. So I've got a bigger audience of, of girls coming in. Um, but the, wh whether it's a guy or a gal, they're, they seem to be like early in their family stages. Like they might have a baby or they may have two babies or maybe they're just newly married. It's funny um, it and it's been really interesting. Yeah, like I think because I'm at that point where over the past couple of years, I just kind of crossed that line between um, being a fairly successful single freelancer. With, well, by single, I mean like my wife and I we're married and that's when I kind of went from making like 20 grand a year to like crap, oh, I've got bills to pay to making like 50 right. grand and then do a hundred grand. And now that I'm consistently in six figures, now it's like I'm attracting the people who were just like me a few years ago, which has been really cool. So I say that to say like, to your point, the success is going to look different to everybody. A good income, like you just said, if it's a single dude who's got a apartment for 600 bucks a month, he probably only needs like 1500 a month and he's probably rolling uh, yeah. or, you know, maybe even 2,500 a month, something like that. Whereas 
somebody like myself, like I'm not happy unless I'm crossing 10 grand a month at least, you know? So that's where, you know, you can kind of, and even just like monetarily wise, when you get into the Divi community or a successful web, a web design community, you can just kind of choose who you want to be mentored by. Like maybe somebody just starting out is going to gravitate towards people who are closer to their range. And then once they get to that next range, I, I call it kind of like leveling up, like maybe level one is you're just, you know, you just want to make 500 bucks on a website and you'd be pumped. Well, the next level is like, I want to make a thousand or 1500. And the next level is 25 to 3000. And then you get to the next level where it's like five to 10,000. So you just kind of graduate, you know, one level at a time. But that's what I love. Our, our community, our Divi community, primarily in the Facebook groups, is a combination of people in all different levels, also in different places in the world, which is huge too. I mean, you and I are both in the state, so we can relate to each other uh, monetarily wise because we, you know, we're, when I talk to people in different areas of the country, sometimes it's hard for me to say, well, you know, th- because the dollar difference is so yeah. drastic, like it may just <clears throat> depend, like what, I, if I'm charging 2,500 for a site, maybe you'll be all right with a grand that might, you know, work out fine for you. So uh, did you experience that too, when you got involved in the community, like having yeah. to work the, you know, the different, different conversions and stuff like that? For sure. You know, and, and as you look at, at scaling and bringing additional people on to work with you, you know, it's, it's easy in this community because of the way things are psyched. You know, it's, it's take it all the way back to where you said, you know, we find the community because we feel isolated. And then you go and find the community and you realize, oh my God, like this is bigger and more connected than I could ever find. Like in a normal job with a local like networking group, because you've got people who are doing this at tons of different stages in life. They have different expectations, but they're in different parts of the world. And so like, like you said, you can go back and where somebody in the U S has no problem paying $3,000 for a website. You can find somebody in like Bangladesh who can build a site for 700 bucks, you know? So it's also like you can, you can level up, like you said, by outsourcing. Cause again, different stages in life, different needs, different, you know, different expectations that they need to set for their life or to, to live a comfortable life. It's a, uh, I love it, man. It's, it's a beautiful, yeah. beautiful thing. Now, <laughs> do you, do you actually, do you sub out any of your service work with Keeglin near media since, cause you're working full time. I imagine you don't have, you know, I'm, I'm, do you, or do you just work nonstop or what does that look like? Have you been able to kind of hire out and subcontract out work? So far. I have done every single bit of every single project that I've done since I've started. Um, It's not the long-term goal. I'd love to grow. um, I'd love to grow the business. I'd love to grow the the amount of websites we can handle at a time. Uh, It's just finding the right people to work with, you know, and outsourcing with the right stuff because it's like, there's one thing I'm, I would never, I would never allow to happen. I'm sure a lot of a lot of people who are outsourcing that way is like I'm very particular about the way things go. Like I'm extremely particular about the process, the look, the way things are done. And so uh, whoever works for me is going to have to fit into that mold. <laughs> yeah, well, and it's probably different. Like if if you were doing it full time, I imagine you would probably have scaled, you know, sooner or at least up to this point, just because. Oh, yeah. yeah, you get to that point because I imagine you're you're fairly selective right now, right, with what you can take on. Yeah. Um, so, and that's not, honestly, that's not a bad place to be in. And I, the cool thing about this talk right now, man, is that you're in a situation where a lot of people find themselves in a similar boat to where they're working full time, they're doing web design, side hustling, and yeah. they're, you know, ready to take that next step or maybe they're giving back to the community. But I say that to say there's no, like, you shouldn't feel bad for not scaling your business right now. And people shouldn't feel bad if they want to reta- want to be the freelancer or be the practitioner. Um, because I was like that for a long time. I did all of my sites for a very long time. I, I subcontracted out work periodically, but I really didn't start scaling my business and becoming the true business owner until 2018, like early 18. And, um, that's when things, you know, for a number of different reasons, uh, number one, I had so many projects I couldn't keep up with. There was no way I could do it myself any longer. daughter was just to be about to be born. Like there was a number of different things that kind of forced me to scale. Sometimes I wish I would have scaled earlier, but then there's other times where I'm like, you know what? 
it's all right. Like I, I was, I was the practitioner, the freelancer of my own business doing all the work for a very long time. And that's all right. Like, you know, it, it's, and if anything, it kind of helped prepare me to do what I do now, which is giving back as far as like what I've learned. Um, yeah. I think what, where I find myself in a unique situation compared to a lot of other people who are authorities in the, in the Divi community and just wider word WordPress community is a lot of people are just business oriented or just business minded to where they don't actually know how to develop or design the site. They just know the business in yeah. and vice versa. Like you talked about earlier, a lot of people are focused on the creative side, but they'd have no idea how to sell a website. So <laughs> I, I think it's been interesting and it's been kind of a privilege to have my feet both equally in both worlds to where now I'm like, I'm pretty dangerous. I, I can sell a website high end and I can also build a high end website. And to, so to now kind of like give back what I've, I've learned is, is pretty cool. Yeah. And I, and I think it's, it's a value of kind of, you know, what you've experienced as well. Absolutely. And it, you said it, I mean, a hundred percent perfect. I mean, to be somebody who can live in both of those worlds, like you understand the business aspect, you know, and, and respect how important efficiencies are and business processes are, but you can go into that creative space. You can design, you can build, you can jump into Photoshop if you need, you know, you can do those pieces. Then you can sell a website, you know, like, man, you're right. That, that is a dangerous place to be. And it's one reason why I really appreciate the community. Cause a lot of those skills that I've learned as far as like best practices to go out and sell, how to price, how to do all those things I've learned from the community, but also the time where it's been just me you know, and not trying to force the scale too soon is really like, I, I know the way I work. I know how I launch a website. I know what that process looks like. I have workflows in place. You know, I've got contracts that are auto generated based on a few things that I fill out like that. The process is there. It's, it's at a point where it could, I could, I could plug somebody in, teach them the way. And, you know, we could, we could go to, we could go to town with this thing, but yeah. it's just not, not quite where I'm at yet. And that's all right. That's yeah. Like that's fine. The cool thing is you're getting in that, you're getting all that in place before you get ready to scale. That's where a lot of people try to scale to where they don't have those systems and processes in place. Yeah. Uh, I just recently chatted with Eric Dingler, who's one of my students who is just like killing his first year of business. And that was, that's the first thing he got in place was his systems and processes. It was mindset systems and processes, recurring income, then scaling. And that's the way to do it. That is absolutely yep. the way to go about it. So the cool thing is you're really, I mean, it sounds like once you're ready to take that next step, you've got your systems and processes in place. Really uh, with our amazing Divi community, it's probably not going to take you too, too long to find somebody who's a good fit with you. And then you could work them in and then, yeah, a little bit of training, a little bit of hand holding through some of that early stuff. And then as long as you find somebody who complements your skill sets and look, that's the big thing right there. Complementing skill sets. What a benefit of having the Divi online community with that idea. Because if you're somebody who's business minded, but you can't design anything, then being a part of the community is huge because you can get help in those areas, whether it's just encouragement or inspiration or examples or literal help, like literally hiring somebody to help you out with those areas. That's another aspect too. Like you can yeah. really level up just being in the Divi community with areas that maybe not, maybe not are your, uh, your strong suit. Absolutely. Absolutely. Man, there's a, there's a wealth of, of different experience out there. You can find anything you need. You know, you can, uh, <laughs> you can find web design specific accountants. You can find coders. You can find backend developers, designers, you name it, business partners. You can find it all. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. I mean, I look at like Jonathan, my lead designer came through the Divi group. He reached out when I did my scaling series. Um, but yeah, but all my subcontractors right now, I have one, I had one graphic design gal locally, but she works full time. So I don't use her as much anymore. Um, and that's the problem with local stuff is generally it's a little, you, you might some find somebody locally, but the cool thing about being in the Divi community in particular is they're already in your same zone in your same tribe. Yeah. Like if I were to find a web designer locally, I'd probably have to see if they know WordPress, see if they know Divi, then I have to teach them Divi. Then, you know, we'd have to go through the whole process where when Jonathan reached out to me, he was already getting really familiar with Divi and he was going for it. So I didn't need to make sure he knew that stuff. Like he already knew that stuff. 
Uh, and that's another benefit too, whether it's hiring out or whether it's getting work as well. I know you really haven't used the Divi community for that purpose, which is totally like I applaud that, that you're more interested in giving back than, than taking. And I know that'll pay off for you in the long run. Um, yeah, that's huge, man. I mean, there's so many benefits with, um, with just the idea of like, whatever you're not strong at, you can get help with. Absolutely. There's absolutely no doubt on that. <clears throat> A lot of helpful yeah. people out there. Yeah. So like where you're at right now, mm-hmm. your, your, your side hustling web design, I kind of an off ball question. Where do you think you would be if you had not found the Divi community? Like, do you feel like maybe you would have given it up or would you just, yeah. Mm-hmm. What, what would that look like? Like, cause you are very, you're very engaged in the Divi community. Um, what would that look like if you think you hadn't found the Divi community? Honestly, I probably, I probably would not be designing websites on it. I really, I've, I've seen, like, I've been a part of, I've been a part of like the elemental community, elemental tour communities. I can't speak. Oh. Um, I've been a part of those a little bit. Like I've watched, I've kind of, I've kind of creeped, you know, um, I've tested out the other builders, you know, I have oxygen and a few other things. I've used a lot of other platforms. I've been in their forums and it's just, it's just not the same, you know, it's not bad or, you know, it's not better or worse or any of that stuff. It just doesn't feel right. You know, like whenever I'm in the Divi communities, it feels right. The people feel right. Um, and I, I feel like if I didn't have that, there's a, there's a very good chance I would have found another way to be creative. Maybe it's, <laughs> maybe I'd have jumped on the drop shipping, uh, bandwagon or, you know, oh. who knows, <laughs> who knows? I don't know, <laughs> Yeah. but I'm happy it worked out the way it did so far. I've heard that a lot of people who get into some of these other builders, a lot of people come back to Divi just for the community. Uh, yeah. and, and I think that not only has, I was just trying to think of like what separates the Divi community. I mean, a lot of it is the openness and transparency, but we got to look past, like these are all results from something early on. Like what I was trying to think of yeah. what really started off the community. I think, Elegant Themes, number one, has really invested in their product and they've made something that's amazing that they keep on expanding and tweaking and working on. They haven't just made something that just kind of sits there. So it's become, it's become the lifeblood of a lot of people's income, just like myself. It's, a, it's the most important tool in my business. Um, so that's been huge. And I think that Elegant Themes really took the initiative of growing that community they hired Nathan, who uh, who is their content manager, who did a really good job at producing content consistently and efficiently. And then they started these communities. And I think Divi attracted professionals, not just cheap web designers who are looking for the cheapest deal or free deal and then they can move on. Like They attracted people who are serious about money and business and want to give back. And the cool thing about that is if you get a handful of people who are like that, early on in the early days of the Divi community, before I was a part of it, before you were a part of it, folks like Gino and David Blackman and a lot of other other people were open and they gave and gave and gave. And that really kind of spiraled the community into what it is now, which is just a remarkable online community. It's almost like a big (coughs) mastermind community (laughs) where you get like quality, for the most part, quality people. Again, my Facebook group is 20,000 people there may be a 10% chance that you're going to get a negative comment or something. And then which case you just report it and we'll take care of it. Mm. Uh, but for the most part, it's still, it's pretty dang amazing. There's no doubt, you know, and I think, um, whenever, like when I look at other builders, I look at, to me, they just feel like products and maybe it's because I'm so close to elegant themes, but I look at them as like, they have a brand, they have a voice, they have a certain cadence to their videos. You know, they're, consistent as all get out. I mean, they're, they're drop, you know, they're going to give you tutorials around the layouts every single week. Like there's content coming. They update their platform whenever they put a point, a major point release out and, and the community, you know, the, the 700,000 users go crazy because there's a bug or it breaks something with their custom code or their plugin. They're putting out a fix behind it. You know, they're, they're quick on the updates. But I think one of the, one of the reasons that they really were able to build a, such a strong community so early on is because they had, they had people who knew what they were doing, who were embraced by elegant themes, not tried to be shut down by them using, you know, the Divi Addicts podcast. Like Divi is not my trademark. 
I don't own the copyrights to anything elegant themes. But, Good point. But I have their name in my, you know, in my podcast title. They could come and shut me down if they were that type of business, but they embrace the community. They know that it's a net positive for the Divi brand if people are talking about it. Whereas I know there are some other ones out there who go after it. You use our name, uh-uh, no, 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 that's us. We control the brand. That's a great point, man. I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah. It's like early on, it seems like elegant themes were very intentional about like, yeah, you want to create plugins that work with our framework? Go for it. Like we'll embrace that. Cause yeah, I mean, it, they really, they really understood that if you have people who are talking about your product, even if it's in the name of a podcast or something, like you said, they could absolutely shut your podcast down because it says Divi, but they're smart enough to realize, Hey, this dude's talking about Divi every week. That's probably pretty good for our business. That's going to help engage people. And instead of people going into their support tickets, they're going into the Facebook group. So, I mean, there's no doubt that just my group in itself, like I I wonder how many support, I don't know if there's a way to track this down, but like how many support questions have been asked in my Divi group? Probably hundreds of thousands, hundreds of thousands. Yeah. If not millions. I mean, where is my royalty check, elegant right? things for saving your support here? <laughs> but no, I mean, that's huge. And yeah, like, I just love that. I think you're right. I think they're very community minded. Um, and that's just a good lesson learned for any business. Like, if you can make a fan out of your product, empower that fan because they are going to do things that's going to benefit the business. I also think one thing that Elegant Themes has done well is. Not only so apart from just the community aspect, they've also put a personality to their brand and they've done that by creating videos by Nick uh, and some of the the other people there. Like when you think about elegant themes, you're likely going to think about Nick's face in a lot of these videos and you'll think about Nathan and some of the other people on staff. Elementor, I have no idea what those folks look like. Oxygen, no idea. Is it like two guys in a basement or is it? I have no idea. Elegant themes has been very intentional and very good about adding a face to the brand. And that's huge uh, in and of itself. I, 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 if I could give you any encouragement, Keegan, it'd be to put some headshots on your uh, YouTube tutorials. Dude, I've because, been thinking about that because I see yours and I'm like, man, Jesus, I guess I got to put my ugly mug up there. You got to put that <laughs> mug up there, man. doesn't matter. I'm telling you, people want to see, particularly when it comes to particularly when it comes to anything that they're going to like learn from, they want to see who, because it really builds trust. It, I mean, just by, I mean, and I feel like a total douche because my site is my face like all over the place. (laughs) Um, So I'm sure, you know, you could look at that and be like, wow, this dude is completely full of himself. His face is literally on every (laughs) picture. But here's the thing. Like you go to my site, not only is it named after me because it's a personal brand, but my face is everywhere. Yeah. So it looks a little douchey, but when somebody shares a tutorial, they see my face. And yep. that is where it's at, man. That's where it's all at is, uh, yeah, you, you know, it may look like vanity. I assure you it's not. Um, it's just, it's that trust building factor. Smart um, marketing. It is. It's, yeah, particularly <laughs> when it's a personal brand or when it's like some sort of teaching. A, if, if somebody Googles a <clears throat> tutorial or something online, they're always going to choose something with a face or somebody they feel like, okay, like there's actually a person behind this. This is who I'm going to be learning from. Whether they realize it or not, it always makes a deci- decision and a big impact. So yeah, I just, I just wanted to throw that encouragement out to you because, uh, and the like I said, one. yeah, try it out, try it out, see how it goes, man. And then you can replace all your thumbnails with your image in there and then you'll be good to go. Yep. Uh, but Elegant Themes has done a really good job of that. They have added personality to their brand. And if anyone wants a marketing 101 lesson for their freelance website, put some personality into your site, whether it's the way you talk, whether it's your image, um, whatever. Put some personality into your site. You want to get away from that typical like faceless we're your digital marketing agency partner. Well, who's we? Is it you and like your brother city? You know, like, <laughs> or is it you and an actual team in a agency? Like I've, I've found that being very real and transparent with where I am in my business has paid off dividends. No um, just because clients can get a feel for like, okay, it's Josh, but he has a team now. Okay. So I might hear from Jonathan or somebody else. Whereas when it was just me, I made it very clear that it's just me. Um, early on, I didn't early on, I did a little bit of false advertising and was like, we will design your site. Well, we was me and my, 
my parents' basement for a little while, you know? So, uh, I don't know. I'm all about, you know, just being real and being transparent and personal will go a long way, but for sure. all that to say, adding some personality can be huge. No doubt. You know, one other thing that I think, um, it really separates elegant themes from a lot of the other ones too, is, uh, the word that kept coming to mind is, is humility. You know, I think that they've, <clears throat> they've, um, you can tell by their approach, their actions have, have shown that they're, they're very humble because to open up your product, to allow all the third party add-ons of different plugins, you know, you have to first come to a realization that your product's not perfect, that there are going to be things that people need that it just doesn't do yet. And being okay with that, where some of the other ones are shutting those, those people down, they've been humble enough to go and say, look, you have a problem, bring a solution and we'll work with you. You know, we'll try and we'll even code our stuff with an API or we'll code it in a way where you can connect into this and you can actually complement the platform. You know, yeah. not, not a lot of people do that because I don't know if it's arrogance or if it's, or what it is, but they just don't, they don't approach their business that way, which I think is a, is a loss. Whereas you can clearly see the success elegant themes has had from it. Yeah. I'll never forget when they came out with that uh, developer, uh, all the developer code and everything like yeah. they basically just opened up their code and said, Hey, here's developers rejoice. I think it was called developers rejoice in that post. And they said, here's our stuff. You can build on top of it, which is very unheard of in the web design community. There's yeah. No it's doubt. amazing. So yeah, man, online community. It's just, it's huge, for, huge for web designers. I'm, I'm trying to, to kind of put a cap on this conversation just because we've covered so many good things. I mean, we've talked about the idea of support, of course, technical support, but then there's business support. There's, um, oh my gosh, every, every area of support that you can imagine, inspiration, encouragement, but then there's the networking aspect. There's friendships that, I mean, some of my best friends are in the Divi community now. And, and I think that's huge, particularly that's cool. once you get into a place in life where like a lot of my local friends, I just don't have as much in common with them anymore. Like they're in different places in life. I, you know, like if we hang out at a party or something, We'll talk about music. We'll talk about some sports stuff for a little bit, but then I get pretty bored and like, I want to talk about business and talk about what I'm really passionate about right now, which is why I love the Divi community so much is you find your tribe and and that's huge. You really get connected. I mean, I I love that you were honest and transparent about where you might be if you hadn't come across Divi and and got involved in the community because it's not only helped you stay engaged and helped your business as you build up your side endeavor to hopefully go full time for you here but it's also given you a platform now to start giving back, which again, you're in the early stages of it, but I know you're making waves in the Divi community. And once you start adding your uh, headshot to your tutorials, you'll start, you'll start really <laughs> converting some people. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, I mean, it's so, so many benefits to it. Uh, and then, you know, mm-hmm. just the idea of having a community where you can actually start hiring people and potentially finding good matches for your business and then it will inevitably lead to business too, as you start, you know, even like I've found if you just answer people's questions and give your knowledge freely in some of these Facebook groups, which I'll make sure I link below to, to my group and some other groups that I recommend in the show notes for this episode. Um, but if you just give your information, you're going to look like an expert. You're going to look like, okay, this guy knows what he's talking about. I keep an eye on people all the time. That's how I found out. Like I've hired some subcontractors periodically by just seeing like, oh, I I noticed that they helped out with this. And actually when Jonathan reached out to me initially, I it wasn't like I didn't know who this dude was. I had seen him in the Facebook group. So that's huge in itself. Like you can make a name for yourself by just answering questions. And let me tell you, as you know, you're being watched. If you're in a Facebook group and you're commenting, you are being watched. So every word you write is precious. It better be uh, constructive and helpful and not criticizing and damaging. Because if I see, if somebody reaches out to me and says, hey, I'd love to help out if you have any availability for, for work or anything. But then I remember, ooh, that guy or that gal said something that was snarky or uh, I don't feel like they're going to be a good fit. Yep. The opportunity is blown. So... Yes, it is. That's another big point to it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, would you have like a um, kind of a final thought for people uh, just about the Divi community and having that support of an online community? What would you say to somebody yeah. who's uh, early, early involved and thinking about it? And if I look back on my journey, the best thing that I ever did is not get locked into any kind of preconceived notion. It was try 
everything. If you have an interest in going down a certain path, give it a shot. You can always pivot back. You can always, you know, reshift. So just try it. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Well said. Yeah. <clears throat> just try it out, man. And then who knows? I mean, people, people get hooked in the Divi community. That is the way it happens for sure. They do. You know, man. A lot of times they come back if they try another builder and then they end up coming back. That's very true too. There's a, yeah. Not every community is as welcoming as this one. I've been in a bunch of them and that's uh, I can't say it enough, man. This, this community is something very unique and special and I hope it, uh, the people that are involved in it do a very good job of, of maintaining it and keeping it that way. Well said, man. I think that's the mic drop for this conversation. That's the best way to put it. So Keegan, thanks for your time, man. Really excited about where you've come from and what you're, you know, what you're doing. Um, particularly what you, you know, you've had that heart towards giving back with your, not only your site with layouts and stuff, but particularly the Divi podcast, uh, which is really cool. Keep, keep doing your thing, man. Stay consistent with that. And uh, maybe we'll have to do a, uh, a conversation a year from now to see how all this circles back around for you and to see where you're at once you get ready to take that next step, man. Absolutely. Who knows where we'll be in 12 months. Awesome. Awesome. Keegan, thanks for your time, man. We'll catch up again soon. Awesome. Thanks, Josh. I appreciate you. Hey guys and gals, just wanted to pop in with a couple things before you head out. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider leaving a review on iTunes or wherever you listen to this podcast. I would love to hear your feedback and it will also help other web designers find the show. Be sure to check out the show notes for this episode. Just go to joshhall.co, click on podcasts and search this episode number and you'll find all the links, descriptions and resources we talked about. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and you'll be notified when the next episode is live. Thanks again for tuning in and I'll catch you guys on the next episode.